Hi everyone, thank you all for joining us, whether you're in the morning or your evening, uh, welcome. I am Callie Heisman. I'm Developer Evangelism Director here at DocuSign, and today I'm going to be hosting some of our friends from the Forest Stewardship Council. They're here to answer all of your technical questions about the challenges for the hackathon. But first, they're going to walk us through some of those challenges and help give you guys some technical instructions for how to do the challenges. So. Please submit your questions into the chat window as we go along, and our friends from FSC will be here to help and answer your questions at the end once they've shown you the presentation about how to address the challenges. So joining me today, um, over, over here, oops, just a moment, looks like we're waiting for them to be able to join us here through Skype. Sorry, everyone, just a moment. Okay, and here we are. Um, we have our friends from FSC joining us. Uh, Joanna, are you here? I am here, Fanny. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Right. Joanna, go ahead. Take it away. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. It's a real pleasure having you today. Uh, on this technical webinar. Uh, I am Joanna Nowakowska. I am Deputy Director for Technology and Information Unit at FST. And I am joined here uh, by my colleagues, uh, my team colleague, Marcelo Lampkowski, who is working for us on various databases and interfaces. And right now he's really excited to pick up the challenge on converting our requirements for certification stored in PDF documents and to put them to a database. We are also joined by our technical partner, partner Congruent, represented here by Shiva and Vishal to support us on infrastructure side. Next slide, please, Marcelo. And in case uh, you missed our live stream yesterday, we would like to, during this presentation, outline the challenges once more for you, plus support them with quite some technical details. Uh, however, at the same time, it will be still essential information and we would encourage you strongly to go to, uh, to the DevPost website on the Hackathon and consult uh, materials that are available there, especially FST Challenge Details document, as well as Technical Guide. And as Kali said, we will be happy to answer your questions uh, at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to submit them. Uh, if you would like to support them with the slide number or with the slide title that you will be seeing on the screen, that would be great. So perhaps that will allow us to easier orientate uh, in your questions. Next slide, please. So going back to the challenge, um, our system, our certification process at the moment is entirely based on physical audits of independent auditors to the certified operations. And with your help, in this hackathon, we would like to develop an application for remote audits for China of custody certification type. China of custody certification is a certification that we offer to wood producers. Those wood producers are those who are handling wood that is coming from FST certified forests. And it can be a very small enterprise, one man or one woman show, or it can be a big paper or furniture retailer. So we have really a, whole, a very great range of different China of custody companies, as we call them. And for some of them, uh, different requirements that we said in our standards will apply. And in this hackathon, we would like to filter those requirements for them. This is application flow that you will see on the screen now and uh, hopefully you will be in the application resembles the real certification process. And this is why it has quite some steps included in it. Um, and therefore we divide it into three parts, three sub applications. In the first sub application, we seek for innovation of how to enable the company pre-assessments whereby uh, applicant for certification would be entering interface and in, through this interface they would be entering describing how they comply with FST rules and attaching relevant data. So it would be essentially a tool for data exchange between certified company and auditor uh, prior to eventual site visit or even entirely hopefully replacing this physical audit. 
In the second uh, sub-application, we want to help auditors to decide whether the remote option for auditing is actually granted or not. Because, in fact, FSC does restrict these options for remote auditing in certain circumstances, depending on our credibility risks. So it may happen that due to our past records, certain risks were identified depending on locations or type of operations. And for that reason, we would, for example, in this situation, said, let's better wait until the situation improves and let's only prepare for an audit, but actually we will not um, apply the remote option entirely. And finally, in the third sub-application, uh, we search for tools uh, that allow physical, uh, that allow virtual visit of an auditor uh, on the control side without being controlled by certified operator. Next slide, please, Marcelo. So, technically speaking, the challenge in the first application is to first build certain data schemas and interfaces that are not then compatible with FST schemas. What we will provide you is sort of similar to what we really have in our databases, and we want that those tools that you built at the top of that will work uh, um, with those resources that we will give you. Um, also, in these applications, we are searching for effective communication tools and data exchange tools between certification bodies, our auditors, and uh, certified companies. In terms of technology, we will be applying here Dynamics, DocuSign, uh, Optionally Translation Services, and Esri. Next slide, please. In the second application, the main challenge will be to expand those interfaces and data, and data schemas that you will build and add spatial data at the top of that in order to combine filters applied through traditional data and spatial analytics and help auditors to decide, do we really go for remote option or do we not? Next slide. And finally, uh, the most, I think, innovative potentially part that will be related to this virtual inspection of auditor on a certified site. And here again, we even further expand interfaces and data schemas, uh, adding technology and data that, uh, that will be collected during this uh, virtual auditor visit to the site. As Kali was explaining you in the live stream, you can focus only on one application, but it would be really great for FSC if we can find a super team uh, who would be able to build all of them uh, working in one flow. Next slide, please. And in other parts of the presentation, my colleagues will guide you through technical details around those challenges, around those uh, three sub-applications. So we'll have, we will have some videos, we will have some demos, and I hope you will enjoy it. In the meantime, we will be collecting your questions from the chat box. So thank you very much. Go ahead, Shiva. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, welcome all. So I am going to give some input about the environment uh, that is required on your side to develop these applications. So as Jonah said, uh, we are going to use Microsoft Dynamics as the base platform to connect and develop your applications. Also, we are going to give some base schema for you to start the development. Uh, when I say base schema, uh, it is a solution file of Dynamics, uh, which you can directly import into Dynamics and that will give the required tables and entities for you to start the development. The base schema will have two components. One is called certificate schema. You can use it for storing the company and the certification details. Whereas we also are giving one more schema called recommend schema, and you can use it for FSE recommends, for capturing the FSE recommends for certifications. So the base schema is going to have the base tables to capture this information. Okay. And going on to the app, one specific things. Uh, next slide, please, Maslo. Yeah. For app one, you will be developing three interfaces. The first one is the pre-qualification one, uh, which you can use it to capture the company information and to identify the company type. We normally call it as a scenario. And for the second interface, uh, is called as a self-assessment interface. And you can use the screen to capture the data against the FSE recommends. Uh, when I say FSE recommends, the recommends are going to be different for different company. So you have to be specific to the company about the questions. Okay. And the third screen is about uh, submitting the information back to Dynamics 
and uh, you can use the Dynamics AP to capture the information into Dynamics. Okay. Uh, can please move on to the next slide? Yeah. Now let us see what you need uh, to start this work. As the first thing, you have to set up the Dynamics instance on your side. And the next one, you have to confirm certain attributes before you start the development. One is like the decision tree uh, that is basically used by the first interface uh, that is called pre-qualification interface is going to use the decision tree. So we have to confirm the attributes for the interface. And the second one is called likelihood matrix. We need the attributes to capture the likelihood matrix in the system. So we have to confirm those attributes. And apart from that, you can also design your questions or the information that you want to capture additionally from the company. Okay. The next slide, Maslow. Yeah. Uh, this is the quick summary about the interface that you are going to develop and the schema required. On the left side, we have the interface called pre-qualification. For that, you need the three schema. And for the COC company, we need the recommend schema. And for the submission, that is submitting the final input to the dynamics, you have to use the certificate schema. So these are the different interfaces that you have to develop, and you have to consume the recommend schema in dynamics. Uh, next slide, Maslow. So as I said before, like the pre-qualification interface need uh, the decision tree schema. So uh, here on the screenshot, you can see that we have different questions. So where the company has to say uh, whether it's a producer or trader. So we have to produce the question accordingly and we have to finalize the scenario or the company type. So for that, you have to confirm the attribute for the decision tree and we have to create that manually in dynamics. So you can refer the resource file which we are going to provide that basically has the decision tree schema information. Uh, next slide, please, Masado. Yeah, so we have to create the attributes that are required to store the matrix that you are seeing here. Uh, we will be giving this matrix to you. Uh, this is called as likelihood matrix, uh, which you have to use it in interface to check the eligibility of the company for the remote audit. The eligibility, you can check the eligibility based on the scenarios that are identified in the pre-qualification stage. So this, we need the attributes to store this likelihood matrix. Yep. Next slide, please. So here are the steps that we have to uh, know, follow to create the instance. One is like, you have to create the trial instance for Dynamics, which is going to be available for 30 days for you to develop. And the second one is you have to import the base schema, which is going to be given, and that will give the certification and the request schema for you. And the third step, once you are ready with the base schema, you can create the decision tree schema manually in the system. And from there, you can start developing the interface uh, for the pre-qualification. So for the pre-qualification, you can consume the Dynamics API Know, connecting the decision tree schema in Dynamics, and from there you can store the information directly to Dynamics. Next slide, please. Okay. For the next interface, uh, that is called self assessment interface, uh, you have to consume the recommend schema. And as I said before, the, the recommends are different for the companies. For that, you have to impose additional logic on the interface to consume only the relevant recommends from the dynamics and you have to get the information from the company. So for that, you have to use recommend schema uh, that is available in dynamics. On the bottom, you are seeing a table uh, which says the interface and the dynamics endpoints that you have to consume. For example, for the pre-qualification, you have to look for the decision tree endpoint and for the self-assessment, you have to look for the COC certification scenario table and for the final Storing the final input of the company, you have to use the certificate schema. Yeah. Next slide, please, Masato. Yeah. For app two, next slide, please. You are going to develop one interface for app two, and app two is going to help certification body to qualify the company for remote audit. So your interface in app two should give the flexibility for the certification body to add additional notes and comments. And further, we are going to provide the web interface 
for for doing the spatial analysis, which you have to consume it, and we have to do the risk analysis for the remote audit. Next slide, please. So as you can see, the first two steps are common. Like we have to set the trial instance, and you have to import the base schema. Once these two, uh, once we have the base schema, you have to add the additional schema that, that are required for the certification body to add the nodes. So we have to create this schema manually in Dynamics. Next slide, please. As I said, we will be providing the web mapping interface uh, through which you have to conduct a spatial analysis and you have to analyze the risk. So ideally, we are looking for two input on the app too. One is the comment and flag from certification body and further spatial analysis. With that, the certification body can visualize the risk and finally decide whether we have to go with the remote audit or not. And for this, as I said, there is going to be one interface in the system. And for that, we have to consume the certificate schema along with the decision tree schema. Yeah. For app three, next slide, please. You are going to develop two components for app three. One is called remote audit, through which you are going to conduct the remote audit, help the remote audit for the certification body. And finally, the, we are going to issue the certificate to the company. So here on the first one, the interface should be help the CV to conduct the remote audit completely virtual. So for that, here you need your innovations and good technology to conduct the virtual audit from end to end. And here we have the full flexibility of dynamics where we can upload any type of files. It could be a video or audio or any photos that are the output of the virtual audit and you can store it in dynamics. For this, we are primarily looking up two types of Next slide, please. So for this, you have to create two attributes. One is like for certification body, you have to create the complete no, entity that can capture the output of the remote audit. And the next one is additional attributes as a private note for the certification body to to be now shown only to the FSA and ASI. For this, we have to impose some additional security on the interface so that this comment is available only to the ASI and the FSA. Yeah, next slide, please. So these are the final interface that you are seeing here. We have about two interface. One is storing the remote audit information. For that, you can use the evaluation entity in Dynamics. And finally, uh, issuing the certificate, you can use the certificate uh, attributes in Dynamics. Yeah. So with that, I conclude my part and uh, we'll be handing over to Marcelo uh, for the actual guidelines demo. Thank you, Shiva. Uh, now that we have uh, more details about each application, we are going to provide you some guidelines on how to set the Dynamics trial instance or how to import the solution data that we are providing you into Dynamics and also to import how to import the data. Uh, then we will have guideline number three about the application registration on Azure and how to consume APIs on Dynamics. And then as guideline number four, uh, as we are using a trial instance, we are going to teach participants how to extend the validity of the of this Dynamics license. So, starting from guideline number one, uh, we are going to play a video on with a step by step um, guide on how to create the, the Dynamics trial instance. So, I will ask you for my colleague Kali if she can start the first video. is to access this website, trials.dynamics.com. Please do not forget the S on trials. Scroll down this page and then choose sign up here. The website will ask you, are you a Microsoft partner or employee? You can choose no, continue signing up. And the next stage is to provide Microsoft some information. The first one is a valid email address, so make sure to enter your email in this box and then click on next. It 
it's the first time that we're creating this, so it's a new account. So Microsoft will ask you to set up an account. So you will need to click on this button and enter some information. For example, your first name here, your last name, a phone number. I will explain why you need it. A company name, for example, company XPTO, your company size. You can choose the number of members on your team and then your country, I'm choosing Germany here. And the phone number uh, Microsoft will use to send you an activation code. So please make sure that you're entering a valid phone number, also adding the country code. And then in the next screen, you can choose if Microsoft will send this activation code using a text message or if you want Microsoft to call you. And you can click on send verification code. In this case, I received a verification code on my cell phone. I'm adding the code here and then you just need to click verify. The next stage is to set a domain name. You can use this text box to choose your domain name. Microsoft will tell you if it's available or not. So you can type here, for example, my testing domain is not available. I'm going with my testing domain, one, two, three, four. And this one is available, so you just can click on next when you feel comfortable with the name you choose. And now you need to create an ID and password to this account. So as a username, I'm going to add here my first name. And to the password, make sure that you're following the rules to creating a proper password. So, for example, here it will say that you need to, from 8 to 256 correct characters, uppercase and lowercase letters should be used, and numbers and the special characters that they can um, accept. So I'm adding here now a valid password, and below I need to confirm this password, and after that I can choose if I would like to receive information from Microsoft, or if I want to share information, or I can just click on sign. Okay, so here you have your user ID to your domain. Please make sure to take note on that. You're going to need it. So once you already know your username, your account, your domain, you can click on next and then you will be redirected to this page where you need to choose the option sales. And after that, you can create on can click on installation complete. So now it's installing. It should take some moments, depends on your internet connection. And now you are redirected to the Dynamics environment. So you have here all the menus, all your sub menus, the tools that you can work and please make sure that this is a 30 day trial version. So if you want to track on that, you can come to this menu, choose admin, and in the next menu, you can choose billing and your products. And you will be able to see the expiration date of this uh, instance. So as I'm creating this uh, trial version on 2nd of July, we'll see here that it's active until August 2nd. Now that we know how to create the trial instance in Dynamics or main environment doing the hackathon, uh, my colleague Vishal will guide you in more, two more important steps on setting up this environment, adding users to this instance and also to assigning security role to, the, to these users. So, Vishal. Thank you, Marcelo. Hello, everyone. From the video, uh, I hope all of you must have uh, got an idea now that how to create dynamic style instance. And uh, all these steps are also listed out in technical documentation as well, which we'll be going to provide you. So, 
Uh, now uh, we are going to cover the remaining uh, points from this slide. That is, uh, first one is add how to add a user in the Dynamics, and the second one is how to assign a security role for that particular user. So for that, let me share my screen first. Marcelo, let me know once you are able to see my screen. Will you see the Skype window, Michelle? Yeah, okay. Can you able to see my screen now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So, as we can see that uh, the first step is uh, I'm, I have logged into uh, my trial instance. So, once you are logged into your trial instance, we need to click on the menus here. And from the menus, click on admin. So, once you landed up, here on this screen so you can find here the user management section within the user management section you can have this option add users click on this button add user you need to follow very simple steps here so the first name last name you need to provide here so for the demonstration purpose I'm giving the first name as Sam last name as user the username Sam123 at the rate trialhack.onmicrosoft.com, which is already in use. Let me change it. Okay. So, further, you need to provide uh, some configurations saying that uh, if you want to auto generate your password or if you want to create it on your own. So, I'm creating it on my own. So I'm just giving with the password here. And uh, I'm keeping the rest of the uh, configurations as it is. So is it? Uh, it is not that required. So I'm clicking on the next button. So the next step is to assign a product license to this user. So we recommend to have this setting as it is. Uh, so we, you can see that uh, you can create maximum of 25 users for the trial instance and uh, you can assign the 25 license to those users so i'm just keeping these settings as it is and i'm clicking on the next button so here within the role section you can see like uh, which uh, role you have to provide so basically the user has the minimum access and if you want the user to be uh, having the admin access you can probably choose this admin option here and further you can go with uh, for which segments you have to uh, give the admin access so for this demonstration purpose I'm just keeping it to this user access and further I'm clicking next button so this window will uh, uh, have your review uh, so just uh, review all the configurations you have done so far and if everything is okay just click on finish adding so once the user is added it will notify that Sam user added to active users so this is done we are done with creating a user so I'm closing this window okay now I'm again switching back to my trial instance. Again, once you are logged into your trial instance, you have to go to settings option here within this and then advanced settings. From the settings button, you have to click on security. After that, click on the user section. You need to 
change the default wave and need to choose enable users so within the enable users you can find the user created user so it has not yet created because a uh, few uh, operations were perform are performing in the background for some time and after that you can find the new user is created once it is created you can uh, probably open that record for time being i am using this sam test for just demonstration purpose and for that user you can find manage roles option here so click on this manage roles so this will uh, show you the list of all the available roles and you can then configure like which role you have to uh, give to this user as per your requirement let me tell you that system administrator is the role which is which is having the uh, highest uh, privileges so if you want this user to be a system admin you can probably give this uh, role to this user and click on okay making that this user as a system admin so once you click on okay this rules will be applying to the user and uh, yes so that's all uh, for uh, user creation in the dynamics and uh, assigning rules to that particular user thanks for your attention over to you marcelo okay thank you visha uh now we jump to guideline number two uh, as you know, we are providing you some resources, and this is regarding the resources number two and number four, the certificate management schema and the standards requirement schema. Now we are going to play some videos uh, guiding you how to import the solution file to create the structure, to create the schema and dynamics, and then how to import the data from the CSV files to each entity. So, Kali, if you could please play the second video. The solution in Dynamics, you need to go to the main menu, choose Advanced Settings, and a second window will open. You need to go to the menu Settings and choose the option Solutions. This option will allow you to create, import, export, and publish solutions. As you can see here, we have some standard solutions already, but to import a solution for the hackathon, you can click on the icon Import. And in this new window, you can choose the zip file that we made available to you. That file, as you can see here, has all the entities, all the resources presented uh, on the documentation as resources number two and four. So you can choose the location of this file and click on next. This file will be uploaded and then you can also check this file content before importing. So if you click on the button view solution package details, you can see some details about this file, as an example, the entities that you have inside, display name, and so on. So if you are comfortable with, click, click on close and then import. The importing process should take a few minutes. And considering that this process will be successful, completed, uh, you should see no error messages. If you see an error message, you have access to the log file that can point you the possible reason of that error. So here you can see that importing part is finishing. And in this next window, you can see the details about the importing part. So you can see the entities there, product, site, all the entities that have been imported and below you can see the buttons download log file as I mentioned if something occurred you can see in the log file and also if you need to publish some customizations you can use the proper button right next to it and if you click on close you can see here the solution FSC hackathon now and if you click on it, you can see the details about this solution. 
if you check the menu on the left side, you will see the option Entities. So if you go to Entities, you will see all the entities that we presented in the technical guide regarding the resources number two and number four, the certification management schema and the standards schema. And actually you can see the details about each entity. Uh, for example, here in certificate, you can check all the fields and see all the attributes types. If you go to COC scenarios, for example, you can navigate to the option fields again and see the attributes, example, scenario code, scenario comments, description. Uh, one more example, country data. And if you check the fields on this entity, you see a country data ID, FSC name, and all the attributes on this entity. Now that you have all the entities, we need to import data to it. Okay, so we created the, the solution. Uh, the entities are there, but they are empty. And we are providing two zip files to you. Uh, and inside these zip files, you can find CSV files related to each one of those entities. And now we are going to play a third video uh, guiding you how, how to import this data and how to do the field mapping on Dynamics. So if you can jump to the last video, please. Kali. Entity in Dynamics, you need to go to the Advanced Settings menu. And when this new window open, you go to Settings and choose the option Data Management. And inside Data Management, you have this option Imports. Click on Imports. And from this part, you can start importing your data. So you just need to click the Import Data button on top. And here you can use the CSV files that we are providing you. So you have one CSV file per entity. So for example, here you have the country data.csv. And if you look at the content, we have one line, one register about France, continent Europe, ISO code 32. So now we are going to import the content to Dynamics. So I'm going to navigate here to Certificate Schema Data, choose the CSV file, open, and then click on Next. Here you can uh, set the limiters for the CSV files, if it's comma, semicolon, the data delimiter, if it's single quotation or quotation mark. Uh, you can choose Default Automatic Mapping, click on Next. And here you start in mapping, for example, this country data file is related to the country data entity. You can see the positive answer on top, click on next. And here you can map the fields. You can map the field, the column on CSV file and the fields on the entity. You can see only the mapped fields. You can ignore some. If it's not mapped, it will be automatically ignored. Click on next. So here is the message. If you're not mapped, they will be ignored. And then just click on next. Uh, you can choose if you are allowing duplications or not. In this case, no. Submit. And now the process will start. So we have uh, some stages on the data importing facility. The first one here will be submitted. So you just submitted the data. You can click on refresh on top and you'll see, for example, the next stage is parsing. Then they will have like transforming, importing, and finally completed. So you can see completed. So success, one register was imported. If I double click it, I can see in this SUSEX tab, the data that I just imported. So you will see here uh, the country name, France, ISO code 32, and the continent Europe. Okay, so 
I think we're done with guideline number two. Now we have the schema, we have the data inside the entities, and we can jump to guideline number three. And I will hand over now to my colleague Vishal that will guide you on how to create application user and consume Dynamics APIs. And also he will guide you right after that uh, about guideline number four, how to extend your trial instance. So Vishal. Yeah, thank you, Marcelo. So, so in this uh, in this slide, uh, we'll be covering uh, how to register our application on uh, Azure and uh, configuring the permissions to access the APIs. After that, we'll see the Postman setup to uh, request for the authentication token, and uh, we'll see further uh, basic operations uh, like uh, retrieving of data. Uh, insert update and uh, delete operations as well so basically we are uh, going to see the crude operations uh, and uh, finally we're going to cover uh, how to extend the trial instance validity so starting with uh, Azure setup I'll quickly run you through how to register an application in Azure so that it could enable you to access their APIs so for that let me share my screen once again Marcelo, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see it now. Your Skype. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Marcelo. Okay, so moving forward, the first step is to log into your Dynamics instance first. As you can see that I have already logged into my Dynamics instance. So uh, the next is to have a new tab open and uh, uh, put URL portal.azure.com press enter so this will okay actually this information is regarding uh, two-step verification but for this demo demonstration purpose I'm just keeping this step as it is not required now so this will uh, straight away take you to the Azure portal without asking any credentials as you have already logged into your Dynamics instance. Using that credentials, it will log in to your Azure portal. So once you are landed up with the screen, you can see Manage Azure Active Directory icon here. So click on the View button below that. So let it load first yeah so you can see the list of options here at the left pane so from that click on the app registrations so this will show you the existing applications registered as well as it will allow you to create a new registrations uh, new application registration so click on the new registration here give some meaningful name to your application I'm giving FSC hack one. So after that, we recommend to have this setting as it is, and click on the register button. So this will create a new application, and uh, you can see some keys, important keys related to this application over here. So we advise you to have these keys noted somewhere so that we can use that in a later uh, demonstration while uh, requesting for a token. After that, the next step is to go for API permissions. So for that, you have to click on this option, API permission on the left pane. From the next screen, you have to click on add permissions. So this will ask you for uh, which application you are requesting for this API permissions. So we need to click on dynamic CRM here. So from the permissions list, we have to click on user impersonation and click on add permission. So this will create permissions for your Dynamics instance. And once it is listed out here, we have to click on grant admin consent. So once it is once it is done, this will show you the status here, like successfully granted the admin consent. So we 
we are done with the API permissions and the last step here is to go for the secret key. So for that we have to we have to click on the certificates and secrets option. From this window we need to click on new client secret. Give some meaningful name to this secret. I'm giving it as a FSC token one on add so you can see like the secret value has been created here we advise you to copy this this value as well because this we will we will be requiring while uh, uh, requesting for a token so that's the configuration from the uh, azure portal and now we are switching to the postman so i'm using this uh, postman for the demonstration purpose uh, to test the apis pro apis of dynamics instance uh, as we all know that uh, uh, postman application actually provided by google chrome and we recommend to have the latest version of the postman while testing the apis as we all know that dynamic uh, dynamics uh, uses uh, OAuth auth authentication for accessing their APIs and for that we need to have authentication token every time when calling an API of dynamics and without this authentication token we cannot access any of the APIs from dynamics so first of all we'll see how to request token so for that uh, let me again switch back to the Azure portal. So here I am going to select the application which we have just now created. And you can find the endpoints option here. Click on the endpoints and this will show you the list of the endpoints ex exposed by this application. So within from uh, we will be requiring this uh, endpoint OAuth 2.0 token endpoint version 1. So you we need to copy this API or uh, URL we can say and uh, we'll have to put it in the postman. So for the demonstration purpose I have already uh, set up all these things in advance. Uh, after that uh, we need to go for the authorization section. Uh, I'm sorry uh, section so within the header section uh, I'm going to uh, set content type to uh, application forward slash x hyphen www hyphen form hyphen URL encoded so once this is done we, we need to pass uh, certain parameters within the body section so as you can see I provided here certain parameters I'll explain this one by one the resource parameter the first one is a resource parameter which uh, indicates as uh, this is nothing but uh, the url of your dynamics instance the second one is the client id so client id is the one which we have copied from the portal azure portal the grant type value must be password this is the uh, default value we can say after that the username and password these two uh, these two values are nothing but the credentials which we are uh, actually using to log in for this dynamic instance and the last one is the client secret that is again the key which we have copied from the azure portal so that's all we uh, are required to pass for requesting a token and i am clicking on the same button now so this will trigger the api and you can see that the api returns 200 as a status that is okay and uh, you can see here the information written by the api as token type uh, is equals to bearer after that scope user impersonation and like that you can see that resource uh, is nothing but the trial instance which we have created and along with that you can see here the access token so this token we would require every time to pass when calling an API from Dynamics. So the next step is uh, we'll be looking uh, for the basic operations like uh, retrieval of the data 
and uh, the basic crude operations. So first of all, we'll check uh, how to retrieve the data using API. For that, I'm creating a new tab here. So again, um, every trial instance of Dynamics gives a base API. So we'll look first how to get that API base API first. So I'm uh, jumping back to my Dynamics instance. From here, I'm going to Settings, Advanced Settings. Again, from the Settings, I'm going to Customizations. From the Customization part, I'm choosing the Developer Resources. So here you can find that instance web api section wherein they have mentioned the base api for our trial instance of dynamics so i'm just copying this api again coming back to postman putting this url here and uh, for the demonstration purpose i'm going to use the country data entity so i'm giving the name uh, giving the logical name of this entity that would be fsc underscore country data and we are using the http verb as gate and while uh, dealing with the apis of dynamics we need to use the plural form of the entities logical name so i am appending the s for that purpose so by doing that uh, we after that we need to provide that authentication token which we have requested in the previous request so for that i'm going to the authorization section and selecting bearer token option over here and i'm again going back and requesting some fresh token copying this and i'm giving it here so I'm done with these uh, things and uh, now I'm triggering this API. So yes, it is returning status as 200, it's okay. And you can see that uh, the records from the uh, country data has been retrieved using this API. So that is, uh, that is what we can do for the uh, get request. So next step is uh, we'll, we'll see how to create a new record for an entity. So I'm going to uh, make this HTTP uh, verb to post to create a new record. The API would be uh, would remain as it is. And this, again, uh, on the authorization, we have uh, we have provided the bearer token here. And after that, um, I'm going to uh, give my parameters in this body uh, section in the JSON format. So here is my JSON. Okay, I'm, I'm changing the content type from text to JSON. So I'm done with these things and I'm now triggering this API. So yes, this has written me that 204 with no content, that, that means uh, the record has been created in the Dynamics. So for cross-check, I'm again switching back to my Dynamics instance. And here I'm going to country data entity. So here is country data entity. And yes, you can find Germany with ISO code 32 and continent as Europe which we have provided through JSON. So that's all about uh, creating a record. Now we'll see uh, for the updation operation. So the same record I'm going to update here. And uh, for the update, uh, we need to set the HTTP verb as patch. But before that, uh, we need to uh, we need to provide uh, ID of this uh, particular uh, record. So for that, I'm again going to uh, trigger the get request. We have already provided the bearer token. 
So I'm sending this request. So as you can see here, for the Germany, we have this country data ID as a primary key. So I'm just copying this ID and I'm passing this as a parameter. And then I'm going to change this to patch HTTP verb. And further I'm going to body section and within this, uh, now I'm going to change uh, this values so that we'll come to know that whether it is updating or not. So I'm going to provide this as Germany test and I'm going to change this continent to two. And now I'm hitting this API. So you can say that you can see here that 204 no content that means the record has been updated. We'll again jumping back to CRM and I'm going to refresh this window. Yes, you can see here the Germany is now been changed to Germany test with continent as Asia as we have provided this JSON while updating. So that's all uh, for updation of the record. And uh, lastly, we'll go and check how to delete the record. For that, I'm just going to change the HTTP verb to delete. And this is no more required. I've already provided the token and uh, here I have already provided the unique ID of this record. So I'm going to hit this API and again the same status the API has returned and I'm jumping back to CRM Dynamics and I'm, I'm going to refresh this view. So yes, we can see that the record has been deleted. So that this is how we can uh, perform the operation using the APIs of Dynamics. Further, um, I'm going to cover the last point of the slide that is how to extend the validity of uh, Dynamic instance. So basically, uh, the Dynamic uh, trial instance has 30 days validity by default. And if we want it to be extended, so we have to go to this menus option here. Again, I'm choosing this admin section here. So within from admin portal, I have to go, you have to select the uh, your products option uh, underneath of buildings menu. So I'm clicking on this your products. So within this section, you can find that how long your trial instance will last. And uh, below that, you can find a link called extend trial. So we have to click on this extend trial link in order to extend the validity of our trial instance. So further, uh, Microsoft will uh, ask you for credit card or a debit card information. And you, we need to fill out this form and submit this form so that it will extend our trial instance validity from 30 days to 90 days and uh, don't worry about the credit card or debit card information this information will uh, never be used by the microsoft at any given point of time this information will only be used if you are going to uh, purchase this trial instance further so that's that's all from my side thanks for your attention guys uh, handing over to marcelo thank you okay thank you visual uh now with this uh guidelines number three and four i think we've we are finished with the technical part and i'm going to hand over to joanna uh, to open the questions and answers part Thank you very much, Marcelo. Uh, thank you very much, Vishal. Uh, I've been observing on Twitch in the meantime the chat room, uh, and we don't have questions up to now. So probably we can still wait a little bit more to perhaps questions to arrive. Other than that, we are also available on Slack channel.
Thanks, Joanna. That's okay. I'm going to take it back over here and just remind everyone um, that this video will be available on Twitch, um, so you'll be able to take a look at it afterwards. Since if you missed anything and you want to use it to refer back as a technical guide, um, you can also head back over to our Dev Post site, and all of the technical documentation that was referenced in these demos is available there. So Stacy um, from DocuSign has put that link in the uh, chat panel on Twitch here, and so feel free to go reference that, or you can take another look at this video anytime you need later on. And of course, we are always available on our Slack channel as well, and the link for that is also on our DevPost site that Stacy has put in the chat. So if you do have any questions um, after you go back and watch this video, um, please feel free to head over to Slack, and this same team from FSC will be there to answer your questions. So. I'm going to go ahead and close it out for today, um, so please do get in touch with us over Slack if you need anything else, and otherwise we will see you again at our stream here on Twitch next week. Thank you.